Hi everybody, this is Maria Clark at Sweet Willow Designs and welcome to my studio. Today's project is a fun polymer clay fish pendant. Here are the tools and materials. They're really pretty simple. We'll need basic clay uh, tools. I am adding a ripple blade and a circle cutter, a 5 16th inch circle cutter. Jewelry pliers, some findings, various colors of clay, some cord, and my Verifane gloss. To get started with this, I'm using about a 3 quarter inch ball of blue clay and I am just forming that with my hands to make a fish shape. I started with that teardrop shape and now I'm just pressing in to make the fin and just use my fingers to sculpt the clay and uh, you'll just continue to sculpt it until you get a fish shape and this is a very very basic shape so um, you know it's not going to require a lot of sculpting expertise but you can see that I'm just using my fingers to smooth it out get the the tail fin and the body shape and then I'll just um, use my fingers to smooth it out a little bit more until I get the shape to what I'm looking for. Um, this is probably about I don't know two and a half three inches in in terms of the total length and you want to kind of be conscious of that because as we go forward we'll actually be cutting this and adding a little bit of extra length. So now I'm just taking my fuchsia clay and cutting a couple of thin, thin strips and I'll roll those out. And what I'm going to use this for is to give a little bit of uh, definition and color to the tail fin. And you could do this any number of ways. Um, you don't have to use strips of colored clay. You could use um, a texture tool if you wanted to or um, circles. You know, you don't have to use the strings of clay. So I'm just sort of tacking these strings down Oops, that one broke, so i got to start with a new one. And just uh, simulate a fin shape here. And you can see that I'll just, I just use my tool to cut it off. Sometimes I just snip it off with my fingers. And just keep adding the strings until you get as many as you think look right on there. Just cut off any excess as you go along. And then I just tacked them down initially, but now I'm really... Uh, pushing, pressing them in to adhere them well to the body. And I think I'll put a couple more strings on there just to just to um, to get that looking a little bit fuller. And uh, just go ahead and put the last string on. And then I'm ready to start putting some fish scales on. And um, I've used my circle cutter and I've cut out some colors, some circles from orange and green clay and then I've cut those circles in half and I'm going to go ahead and place those on the body to simulate the fish scales. The way I started this to get the most even distribution of the scales is to actually start in the center back of the body that was the very first piece of orange clay and then you can fill in around it and that gets you a good start and then just overlap the next layer uh, the next row just continue to overlap it and offset it so that um, you get a sort of the, the scale look. And you'll notice as I'm putting these scales down that um, it overlaps or, or goes off the edge of the body. And that's okay because I will go back and clean that up at the end, but mostly I'm just trying to cover the body. So just continue to do row after row until you get as many rows of scales on there as you like. I am not going to do the entire body uh, because I'm going to add another uh, color and um, different sort of look. So just go ahead and we'll just keep putting the rows on and just doing the offset so we get that scale look. This is really simple um, and I actually think it's pretty effective in getting the look of scales. So the tools here are really simple. We don't really need to have a lot of tools that we're investing in to get uh, lots of different kinds of look with polymer clay. That's kind of the fun of it all. You don't have to have a whole lot. So I'm adding the next row. And you can see that I've sped this up quite a bit. Um, so you can just get the sense of how this works out. And now I'm putting the final row on. Just keep getting those lined up. Now I'm going to take my ripple blade and the set that I have is a Sculpey set and you'll see some product links below. 
but it comes with two sizes of ripple blades and I'm using the largest size and I'm just going to make a rickrack so you can see how I'm making sure that I'm offsetting that um, or placing it so that I get this rickrack look and just pull up that fuchsia clay and start to position it. I needed to add a few more scales there to get the full body cover. And just go ahead and get that last piece put on there. And now I will add the fuchsia rickrack. And this is, um, I think, going to really give it a cute look. So go ahead and place that and then tack it down. And you can see that I'm slightly overlapping the last row of scales. And then I just take my craft blade and trim off any of that excess clay that I have and get my shape, my fish shape back. And uh, this way I've made sure that the whole body is covered with clay. And just clean it up a little bit. Okay, so now I've got my fuchsia rickrack. I'm going to add a couple more rows of this rickrack shape. Here I'm using a yellow. One thing about this yellow, I notice that it does darken. So keep in mind your colors when you're creating this. And uh, I'll bump that up against the fuchsia. See how cute that looks? I think that looks really cute. And it gives it just a, a little bit more interest. Let's snip off the excess there. And then I'll add my third row of rickrack, which is this bright green. Same technique. And then bump it up against that. And get any excess off. Now the next step is to add an eye. So I'm just using one of my full circles of orange clay. Get that pushed down and then I'm going to take um, a bit of white, just a teeny little bit of white which will be smaller than the orange, size of the orange. And place that, see how I've placed it there and then just tamp it down. So I'm getting the start of the eye and then the last piece is a little bit of bright blue. And that completes the fish eye. I think that looks really cute. Now, um, what's a fish without a little bit of a smile? So I'm going to take a little string, this, one of the strings of this fuchsia clay, and make a little C-shape for the smile. And I think that'll give it another little bit of whimsy for this fish. And take out the excess, smooth that out. And there you go. That really completes the basic sculpting and um, applying the various colors that we'll use on our fish. I'm going to take the edge of my blade and just do a little bit more refinement to get the shape back. There, that looks really good. All right, now I'm ready to cut this. Now you don't have to cut this, you can leave it exactly like this and just use it as a pendant, but I wanna have a little bit of movement. <clears throat> so I'm going to cut this into four pieces and I'm just sort of eyeballing where I think the cuts make sense and um, just getting the three cuts there so that I get the four pieces. And now I have to put this together. This clay is still raw and I've got all of these little eye pins and I'm going to place them in there because I wanna articulate this, I want it to have some movement. So I'll just create a little hook and that's to help this eye pin stay embedded in the clay and uh, just use my plier to straighten it up so I know it goes in straight and then I'm going to put this right in the mouth of the fish, right in the center. Use my pliers to help me get that in there. This clay is going to distort a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I can just refine it uh, with my fingers around the eye pin. And then make sure that that's well embedded in there and that that hole that I created by slipping the eye pin is closed up. All right, now it's just a matter of placing the rest of the eye pins. Same technique, create a hook. And then what I want to do is make sure that I'm getting the eye pin in the middle of whatever the section is that I've cut there. Use my tool, it's a little easier I think to use the plier. And just get that right in the, the middle. and then close it up. <clears throat> and I'm trying to be a little bit careful not to distort the clay too much. You can't help get it with some distortion. Just using a rubber tool to close up that gap that I created. 
And then I can just go ahead and do that with the rest of these pieces. I need to add a piece, um, two uh, eye pins to the first three pieces and then one eye pin on the tail fin. And I've sped this up just a little bit so you don't have to sit through the whole process, but you get the idea. Just look for the middle of the piece and then get your eye pins in. And that's going to give us a lot of fun movement as we put this piece together. I really like um, these pieces that have a little bit of movement to them. But again, you know, you don't have to do this if you don't have eye pins, for example, or you just like the, the look of having the um, one piece pendant. That's perfectly fine, too. You do whatever you think is going to, going to give you a fun piece of jewelry to wear. So I'll get the last eye pin done and uh, create that last hook and get that embedded in the tail. And now I've got these pieces all together. I'm going to cure it on the card and now I'm just kind of figuring, trying to remember how it came together and just get it back together and um, get that in the oven for 60 minutes and be sure to tent it with aluminum foil or paper or something to prevent scorching. One thing that I did want to mention is after the piece was out of the oven um, and cooled, I did varnish it with Varathane gloss to bring out the color and to give it a little bit of shininess and then I cured that for about uh, 20 minutes. Now I'm using a four millimeter jump ring to attach each one of these pieces. You kind of have to pay attention when you use the jump ring to make sure that your pieces are going to fall correctly. So just kind of notice that when you're putting it on. So twist to open those jump rings. And I use the plier to hold it steady because those jump rings are really small and, and they were a little small for my fingers. So just twist that closed again and make sure that those jump rings are really secure. And you'll go ahead and add one so that you can put all these pieces together. And that's going to give us a nice movement, a nice swing to the fish. Almost kind of like uh, how they would look as they move through water. All right, so let's get the head on there. And get our last jump ring closed up. And there it is. The last thing I needed to do uh, was to add the jump ring. So this is just a very simple cord and I have um, slip knots uh, so that it's adjustable and it's a bright fuchsia color because I think that really complemented the piece. And then there's that larger jump ring for the bale. And go ahead and close that up. And there you go. Um, you'll have a fun articulated fish pendant perfect for summer. I love the way this turned out. I hope you really enjoyed this fun project to make this colorful, bright fish pendant. Please check out all, all of the artists that are participating in the Creative Arts Collaboration YouTube group. See the hashtag below and check out their videos. Thanks as always for joining me in my studio. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, or leave me a comment. I enjoy hearing from you. As always, thanks for joining me in my studio. Take care.